Thanks. Thanks for getting us that last minute link. We were, I don't think he was getting it through his school email for, for some reason. So yeah. sending it to me work. I yeah. Yeah. That's what we figured out. Yeah. Yeah. So welcome everyone. This is the third in a series of four or maybe five presentations for the um, Four Freedoms uh, Youth Competition. And today we're focusing on music. Um, and I'd like to introduce to you Jeff Adler, who's joining us from New York. He's a prolific composer and woodwind musician from New York City. In addition to being the resident composer for the Hevra Ensemble, he writes extensively for the Jewel Orchestra of St. Paul's Church, Brooklyn, and for two world music ensembles, I might watch this, Malama Mama and THG Orchestra of Brooklyn. Yes, Malama Lama. Mama La Mama, thank you. Mama La Mama, forget it. Doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> Jeff has recorded a CD of his original Native American flute music. He composed the music for the Vita Nova production of the theatrical work Harriet and Anne, which had its New York premiere in September 2005 at the Producers Club in New York City. His work entitled In Search of Unification for Bass Clarinet and Marimba was premiered in May 2005. In at uh, California State University, Sacramento. And the work was also featured in April 2006 by the Omni Ensemble in New York. I have played that piece, it's fantastic. Hard, but fantastic. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you. And I'm gonna introduce Carlos to save time. Carlos McMillan is a pianist, composer, singer, songwriter, music educator, and accompanist. And I miss playing with Carlos by that much because we were scheduled to do Shepherd on the Rock and um, I had a little stumble and jammed my fingers, so I never got to, I haven't gotten to play with him yet. Oh. Um, Only a matter of time, my friend. I <laughs> think so. He's performed in concert with the Sacramento Philharmonic and Operas and Symphony de Oro, the Camellia Symphony Orchestra and Camerata, California. In 2018, his piano duo, Carlos and Brennan, won first prize in their category at the Golden Classic Music Awards performing at Carnegie Hall. In 2019, he appeared with soprano Sushil Bibbs as accompanist for her acclaimed one-woman musical on Mary Ellen Pleasant. And in, 2000, in 2021, his suite for piano and orchestra, A Winter Rhapsody, received its online premiere by Symphony de Oro with the composer as soloist. You guys feel free to mention any of your other pieces that fall under this category, and um, you're off and running. Thank you for being here. All right. Well, I'll start. Um... First, I just wanted to mention that Hever Ensemble has, well, we have three CDs out and one, it's not going to be a CD, it'll be a digital. A fourth album is coming out in a month. Um, so that's a lot of, a lot of music, a lot of cool mm -hmm. stuff. And also, I just, as a uh, background, because not only am I a composer, but a performer and freelancer in New York City, I've played on Broadway for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of orchestral playing, chamber music playing, a lot of stuff. But that's me. Let's talk about the music composition. And I, I, I believe that's what everybody's interested in here, right? Composing music. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, Carlos and I have been at it for a while and pumping out stuff. And, um, We'll talk separately, but I have um, some things I want to address first. Um, first of all, I'll start with the easier stuff. Um, first is listening, ear training, let's say, but but listening. Um, it's important that your your ears you'll be able, you're able to to hear intervals, hear chords. Not everybody has the same ability, and it doesn't mean that you can't be an excellent composer just because you don't have perfect pitch or you can't recognize a D minus seven like that. But it's good to have a good working knowledge of music um, and of music theory also. Um, it's a good idea to be listening to all styles of music so you can expose yourself. I mean, if all you've ever listened to was rock and roll, and then suddenly you hear, you know, a giant classical piece by Gustav Mahler that lasts an hour and a half, you might not understand it. But 
if you're exposing yourself to all all musical genres, it's great. And this way, you really know what kind of direction you want to take your own musical career. Um, now, let me ask. Oh, good. Uh, I just got the names listed. Rodin. You have your, are you muted or no? Nope. Okay. I just just curious. What instrument do you play? Piano. Okay. And how about you, Caleb? Uh, piano. Okay. Well, piano is. <laughs> Carlos is really excited about this. I can see. Um, piano is a great way to start, especially as a composer. I personally don't play piano. And I do a lot of stuff in my head. Um, and that's why my hair has turned gray, I guess, because of all that brain activity I've had to do. Um, but piano is a great way to start. Um, and just, you know, listen to as many th different things as you possibly can. Um, and you might say, you see, also when you're young, that's why I say try and listen to as many things now as you can. A lot of times when you're young, you say, well, the only cool thing is uh, Kendrick Lamar or some other, you know, some other person like that. And that's the only person I really want to sound like. But that really puts you in, in a box almost. If you're listening to all kinds of things, you might be surprised what you end up wanting to do and the kind of music you wanted to be writing. So, Carlos, you have anything to say about this? Well, first off, I completely agree with the theme of listening to everything. Uh, everything. I've been to concerts where my friends were, you know, doing heavy metal and screaming, and I regretted it the next morning when my ears were ringing and said never again. However, it was a really valuable musical experience, you know? And not only that, but I think, so the idea of genre right and like having these different niches that that you want to write in right genre is something that we sort of can't get around culturally because i think people think you know are, are into the idea of genres country music gospel music folk music but i think that if you choose to let's say you like kendrick lamar and that you want to be able to write a song that sounds like a kendrick lamar song whatever that means right if it's rap lyrics if it's the beat and production what what have you I think it's really important not to just pigeonhole yourself to listening to just Kendrick Lamar, but listen to all the artists that Kendrick Lamar listens to, right? And trace the lineage and trace the history and understand that whole genre, right? You know, that Kendrick Lamar is working in because you will get stuck, I think, if you just put all your, your emphasis on any one particular artist or any one particular style. Um, and what goes into a composer's head isn't always what comes out, you know, like John Adams, for example, the composer, uh, very prolific here in America, uh, is a big fan of like rock and roll and like, you know, like all kinds of other stuff, you know, these, these genres that manifest in his music in sort of unexpected ways. Um, and you may not notice that if you're not sort of listening for that actively, but it just allows me, at least as an artist, to feel free to be able to just work seamlessly in whatever I'm doing and not have to be like stuck because I'm making intelligent choices, right? I'm making choices based on things that I've studied. And this is, you know, this is how I want to express that idea. Excellent. Uh, there's a, unmute yourself. Yeah, can I ask a quick question? Yeah, so, also, um, of course, before you do that, there's a question for you in the chat. Oh, okay. Who can answer? I have no idea what the answer is. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So um, this this competition is geared specifically towards a particular theme, which is uh, one of the four freedoms from uh, President Roosevelt: uh, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom from fear, and freedom from want. And so when you're choosing genres, um, let me say this the other way. Uh, if you are looking at writing something in a particular theme or for a particular mood or for a particular event, um, how does that influence the genre you pick, the style that you pick to write in? 
Oh, wait, that was a question for us? I'm sorry. Yes, that was a question for the composers. Oh, okay. Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. I yeah, that's sad. okay. I, I hear you have like New York uh, sirens in the background. Oh, so. right. And by yeah. the way, um, I'm coming from Brooklyn here, where it's been <laughs> rainy and miserable and chilly for the last two days. I'm sure, actually, you probably envy that being in California. Oh, tremendously. <laughs> we need that rain. We're getting enough rain for you guys. But... Um, as a result, we're getting a lot of maybe accidents outside of just cars being impatient and honking and stuff. But sorry, can you repeat that? Quote? Yeah. So um, I was saying with regard to genre, when you are creating a piece, a piece of music um, that is as a result of a mood or a theme that you're trying to fulfill, that does that influence which genre uh, you want to write in? Um, or yeah, I, would say, I would say so. Um, for me, and it's different for everybody else. For me, um, somebody mentioned something, and fortunately, I feel blessed in this regard. Somebody mentions, I need something in this style or for this kind of thing. Usually, ideas pop up in my head very quickly. And if I'm more, the good thing about having an iPhone nowadays mm -hmm. is so if I'm walking down the street, and these ideas are pop, popping in my head. I could just put, you know, voice the voice thing, uh, voice memo on the iPhone, and just sing it into that, and sing a couple ideas. And when I get home, I'm able to to work these ideas out. Because usually I'll forget them in a few minutes, mm -hmm. unless it's on my iPhone. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean that's the way. Uh, before before we had those things. <laughs> I remember a couple of times walking and then just taking a scrap of paper and putting putting uh, lines on it, you know, staff lines <laughs> and writing stuff on and be a mess. And <laughs> but yeah, this was before we had those iPhones and stuff. In any case, yeah, for me that happens. Um, as an example, um, recently I was asked to write um, some simple flute duets. And as soon as I was asked, some ideas came into my head. Got to work, got it done. Um, that's how it works with me. It doesn't work with that with everybody. How about you, Carlos? How does that work for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, to, to answer the question, I think specifically yes and no right because i think it, it, when it comes to like choosing a genre for a specific idea i say yes in the sense that depending on whatever that idea is i try to seek out works that have already covered that particular material so if i'm writing a piece for halloween right i'm going to look through the repertoire and find like dance macabre you know like things that are spooky ooky, or the kinds of music that people listen to around halloween danny elfman soundtracks you know and try to get into like what's going on here but like i said earlier, what goes in isn't always what comes out because the result of all of that might be a string quartet, you know, with some like weird extended techniques and spooky, ooky, blissandy on the strings, ooh, you know, or something, I don't know. Um, so I think it, it kind of just, on some level, the limit is only your imagination, right? Um, yeah, and just in terms of like figuring out how to begin on a particular piece of music, beyond, you know, I, I think, not just listening, but also being open to, you know, sometimes ideas do just pop into my head, right? And sometimes it can just be a new opportunity to tackle a musical, something I'm interested in musically, right? Like if there's a particular chord that maybe landed in my little Rolodex of ideas here, this might be time for me to take that out of the box and play with it and see if I can, okay, well, where does this chord want to go harmonically? Do I want to move it here? Do I want to do that? Um, it can be an excuse to try a new instrumentation, right? Depending on what the result is. I don't know what, you know, if it's a commission and somebody's asking you to write for these instruments, that's a real good time to dig into some some uh, orchestration books or instrumentation books and figure out more about that particular instrument and really get into it and reach out to somebody you know who plays it and ask them, what do you think about this? Like, what can you tell me and show me? And never be afraid to say, is this possible? Like, can this be played? Because I've learned a lot from people coming up to me in rehearsals and being like, I can't play this. I don't know how to do this. Like, this is not a thing that we do. You know, also a flute player being like, this is not going to sound like you think it's going to sound down here. Like, I know you want it to be that. It's not going to happen. And I'm like, 
Okay, well, visions. Here we go. So, yeah. Right. If, I, if I could just add to that, um, yeah, I think that um, I really want uh, the musicians to know that when you are creating a piece, you if you want to create a piece, for example, for band or for symphony orchestra, you know, there are um, programs where you can do that and you can submit that file. You don't have to get together a full orchestra to play it. So if you want to create something that's not for piano, for example, um, and we can help you with that. I mean, we have, what, five professional musicians here online right now. So any of us can help you with that. And um, I, I, before we go on, I would love to hear if any of the um, young folks have any, or even their parents have any questions about um, the composition, competition and um, how they can kind of get their feet wet. The, the, the uh, submissions are due at the end of October. So, um, but the submissions are also rather short. So you do have time and, and let me know if you have some questions, uh, feel free to, Roden. Uh, so if, can you like submit an audio file instead of just like a sheet with the music written down on it? You actually will need uh, the audio file. And if you don't write music on, on staffs and stuff, such, you will need to have a, um, what do we call that, Lori? You, you wrote the description for that. Yeah, um, yeah you, have to, you have to either put it on um, some kind of Sibelius, uh, you know, written on the computer or um, finale. It, it, has to be, it has to be written. Something has to be written, Roden, okay? Um, because, you know, we're afraid that people will just make anything up without thought, you know, just play something on the piano really fast and, and that's your submission. We really want it to be a, a written uh, document in a way of music. You know, and, and being... Wait, one second. I'm sorry, and, and if you do need help, you do have two composers here that would be able to help you put it down or, or whatever. I was going to say, I'm happy to, to help in that regard. I've been using Finale since 2004. Mm -hmm. so I actually use Sibelius, but you know. And yeah. I have Sibelius also, so, so we can, we can get you going. Doesn't matter. But yeah. the, the one it really thing doesn't matter. I care about that, it's, it's really a good idea to be a well rounded musician in other words to be able to play play music read music write music down it's imp it's important um like i said ear training is a good idea um a lot of times i'll tell you a, a little secret of mine that i don't tell people usually a lot of times if i'm playing let's say the clarinet or bass clarinet or flute or something like that and I might have the television going on at the same time and I'll hear some music on the television and then I'll just repeat what what I just heard. So it's like a little a little tune from a commercial or a theme from a TV show. I'll just play it on the clarinet or, or whatever I'm playing at the time. Good ear training. And that's that's also important as a composer. Um, but it is important to have a well-rounded education now you can say well there's you know a lot of examples of of highly successful mu musicians who couldn't read or write music such as the beatles <laughs> you know can't get much more successful than how the beatles were. <laughs> but you know that's the exception that that proves the rule almost i mean it's so rare that something like that happens. And even if you're a jazz musician, especially nowadays, um, it's important to be able to read. A lot of times, if you're getting hired to play a jazz gig, and even like a avant-garde jazz gig, there are still what they call charts, which what we call just music, um, on you know, written music, where you need to be able to read that as well as improvise um, at a high level. Um, and of course, your free meeting will end in 10 minutes. Don't worry about it. I'm not worried. Just saying we'll have to. You can't upgrade it. We'll have to redo it in 10 minutes. So we'll have to sign back in. Yeah, I guess. I don't so. think it'll cut you off. It should. It, it probably won't cut you off. But it, we, okay. It, it if it does. 
If, if it yeah. does, I have an account. We can go past the the forty minute time. Would you like okay. me to send a link to to a new Zoom room? Yeah, that would that would be great. Do you have her? I don't. I don't. You have everyone's email or no? No, no, no. But, in, but while you guys talk, I will put all the emails together and send them to Carlos right now. Okay, that, that's okay. Right. Yeah, if you can just send them to me in an email, I'll reply with um with the link. Okay, and I just want to make one more statement while we're talking about this. Um, Rodin. Um, I'm thinking that, you know, you go to the School of the Arts in San Francisco, so there's probably a music lab there where you can use um, software and do things. I'm going to go off and take care of this. Uh, there's at least three music labs. Uh, I, if I need one, I can get one. Excellent. You, you go to Soda? My brother graduated from Soda. That's awesome. I actually don't go to Soda for music, um, but I do enjoy music and I do enjoy doing music at Soda. But yeah. He went to Soda for Music and then went and became an illustrator. <laughs> so, well, there you go. All right, so there for film. All right, well, sounds quite interesting. So let's get to, I guess, a very important point, which might get interrupted. And if that, I may interject, were you going to say something, Caleb? I had a question. Oh, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's quite all right. It's just it's very pedestrian, probably. I mean, he's way more into all of the right language to describe music, and I'm very much just I just listen to it. But from a kind of judging standpoint, is this going to be? Do you feel judged a little bit more on the inventive nature of? this being the, like a really unique melody or is it more about the perfection of how the composition is kind of built and if that doesn't make any sense then move on but it does make sense so i don't know that you know the answer Lori. yeah this um, is laurie friedman by the way hi um one of the directors with uh deborah Pittman. so <laughs> uh, i can answer the question we we really have to hear the the different um, things that will be submitted before we really make up our minds whether you know how great the composition is or whether it's harmonically great or melodically great or uh, I mean it, it, this is not just this is not just uh, um, uh, music, it's painting, it's 3D art, it's digital art, it's dancing, it's theater. So there's a lot of things that we we do have to discuss. So it's hard to answer your question right now. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a it's not a competition to see who can write the greatest melody in the world, mm -hmm. or, or who can write the greatest harmony. You know, right now, I think it's creativity. It's how creative it is. And that's the key to all of the, the art and, and the competition. It's the creativity involved in who's ever doing this. Does that answer your question? I think it does, yeah. Yeah, thank you. So, you're welcome. Going back to my spot. <laughs> um, thank you. So, I mean, creativity, is born of inspiration and that's I took, okay i shouldn't be reading this stuff no, no, while no, i'm no, talking no, um, um, okay. um born of inspiration and the whole thing is where do we get our inspiration from um sometimes you can be getting your inspiration from let's say you see a really a really cool movie and that inspires you to move somewhere or a painting or something you know okay. a book something like that something that would inspire you or hopefully see if it's me and i'm doing this competition now i might be a year or two too old for this competition just a year or two but in any case if i'm doing this competition i read the speech by FDR. I might even be reading about the whole world, what's going on while he makes this speech. It's a very, very dangerous times those were. Um, like we are living in dangerous times again. So, you know, there, there's a lot of uh, validity in 
taking the inspiration from a speech by FDR and moving it to times, to now, nowadays times, let's say, to now. Um, the whole thing is, like I said, sometimes I don't, I, it, inspiration, creativity, sometimes you got to be working at it too. You know, I made it seem like I get all my ideas like this. It doesn't happen that way. There's many times I'm sitting there saying, oh, I got to write a new piece. I don't know what I'm going to write. What am I going to write? And I'm there, and sometimes for days, a few hours at a time, this idea, I come up with an idea, the next day I said, that was garbage. Um, it happens more often than not. Um, you know when it's good, because deep down, you can feel when it's good. Um, the uh, I'm sorry, I, um, Andrea had a question, uh, Deb. Uh, if you read it, um, is this will this be judged more by the execution or the creativity or you know? Um, she was wanting you know whether so, yes. So Lori, I'm going to try to explain myself. So if somebody comes up with a wonderful dance that is extremely creative. Mm -hmm. But in the submission, you know, they can't quite land the three point <laughs> axles, whatever. Okay, I'm going to dance. Not that mm -hmm. anyway. So they've presented you something incredibly creative, but their execution isn't perfect. In the music contest, if someone writes an extraordinary melody that is evocative of beauty, of freedom, but the execution um, in their presentation to you is imperfect. That was what I was trying to get to. Okay, so I will. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I, I will take that question and say that uh, there are a couple of things to keep in mind. Yes, creativity is at the forefront of this competition, which is why I wanted to include all the visual and performing arts. And um, we're also looking at this through different age skill levels. So I know that the uh, age range seems broad for this competition. What was it 12 to 20? And um, originally it was middle school and high school, but since we had to push the competition into the fall, we had some high school students who were interested in participating who graduated this summer, so we wanted to make sure that they could still participate, but we also have two separate levels of judging. Um, you will be judged um, within that whichever freedom you choose whatever whichever genre you decide to submit you will be judged with students of like age. So there's different categories uh, of prizes to win. And um, yeah, so I, I am not as interested or excited with someone who is like, you know, the greatest prodigy if they've created something that doesn't really have a message. It's all about the message. It's all about um, exploring those freedoms and trying to express them through your art. So, you know, I can't dance either. So <laughs> don't worry about the skill level. Uh, of the performance, but think more about the heart and compassion and soul and expression that went in to the actual product. And you do have. Um, she wants to talk to us. Oh, um, I don't, I don't remember. I'm also a couple years too old. Just <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, Andrea. That's okay. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say that that uh, the 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 judging's will be done by a lot of people who know what they're they're doing they're really they're in the profession itself so um you know it, it's it's there's a lot of um like you you mentioned is there a rubric involved and and andrea we have not in all honesty we have not done a rubric yet um but we will and you know because it really needs to, especially if you have, um, you know, people, uh, kids that are young, uh, depending on the age group. Uh, so there's di there'll be different rubrics for each 